Hey wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. Now today we're going to be drawing a really simple but quite stylized and groovy portrait. And throughout the video, I'm going to show you how you can customize it to resemble more either yourself or a person that you like or honestly whoever. So I'm going to give you options for skin tones, facial features, accessories, clothing, hairstyle, a bunch of different things. So grab your drawing tools and let's get started. And just an FYI, Waffle is extra crazy today, so if you hear some howling or some whistling in the background, you'll know why. <laughs> now, as you can see, as usual here, I'm using Procreate for this demo, but this is a very simple tutorial in the sense that we're not going to use any fancy features. So you can follow along with really any software of your choice, as long as you're comfortable with basic tools like brush, eraser, and layers, maybe masks as well, although I'm going to give you opportunities or alternatives if you don't want to use masks or if you don't have masks in your software. So the first thing you can customize in this piece is the canvas size and the ratio of your canvas. Here I'm going with something square that I could use as a profile picture and I'm going with 3000 per 3000 pixels, but you can do something completely different that is totally up to you. Just make sure the canvas is not too small, otherwise when you zoom in to draw your details, everything's going to look super pixelated and you're not going to be able to draw those details. Details. So again, in my case, 3000 pixels by 3000 pixels is what I'm going for. Now to import the piece, we're actually going to start by importing a paper texture that we're going to put on top of everything is going to give us a little bit of that grit and is going to really bring the piece together from the get go. Now for that, you can use any paper texture of your choice. Of course, if you don't have one, don't worry, I included a free one that you can download in the description below. So feel free to pause the video, go ahead and download that. It is part of my Procreate Jumpstart Kit, which is called Procreate Jumpstart Kit, but really there's a bunch of alternatives for different softwares as well, especially for the paper texture. It's just an image, so it's gonna work no matter what software you're using. So go ahead and download that. And once you have it in your device, we're just going to import it as a layer in front of everything. So to do that in Procreate, you can just go in the wrench icon menu here at the top. Selecting either insert a file or insert a photo depending on where you saved the texture. And if you need more instructions on to how to import the texture, unzipping the folder and all those things, I'm going to link a blog post in the video description that you can follow. It's very simple, it's very quick. I'm personally going to go with the second paper texture. You can go with the first, it doesn't really matter. And once it is in your file, we're just going to resize it so that it covers the entire page. And in order to only keep the texture and not the opacity of the paper itself, we're going to apply a blending mode to this texture. So go ahead and open your layer panel and locate the opacity slider, which is also usually where the blending modes are. So in Procreate, you can just tap on the little N next to the check mark. And from there, we're going to select the blending mode multiply. And multiply is probably the most basic blending mode. So if you have blending modes in your software, it should be in there. And if you don't have blending modes, honestly, it's not a problem. You could just forego the texture altogether, or you could put it instead of above everything, below everything. So your elements would not have textures themselves, but at least the background would have a little bit of texture. Now, once we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and just rename this layer to paper texture. So the first step here is just going to be working on the face itself, which is going to be pretty simple because we're going to use very basic shapes and forms. So go ahead and create a new layer. If you're using a blending mode on your texture, put that new layer below the texture, but if you're just using it as a background texture, put everything for now on above the texture and rename that new layer to face. Now, if you want to use the exact same colors as I will be using within this video, I included a free color palette. It is in the same bundle as the paper texture. So you can go ahead, pause the video and download that if you'd like. Otherwise, I'm always going to add the hex code here at the top right of the video. So you could take that code and just input it in your color selectors. Now, obviously here, this is a customizable video so you can pick your own colors as well. And I actually highly encourage you to do that because it is a good way to practice starting getting out of the comfort zone, getting out of the step-by-step videos and doing things a little bit more on your own. As you can see here on the left hand side we have a few different options for skin tones. You could go again with something completely different. I'm going to pick something that is I would say closer to my skin so the second option right here but again here pick whatever feels right for you. 
And here, as usual, I'm going to suggest a few different brush options that you can use to follow along this video. So I'm going to suggest free for create brushes that you can use and get really great results. I'm also going to do my best to suggest brush alternatives if you're working in a different software, or at least ways to find brush alternatives if you're working in different software. And I'm also going to suggest brushes from my ultimate illustration bundle. Now these brushes are not essential at all, but they're the brushes I use when I'm working on the illustrations, not for YouTube. I made them for myself. I really like them and people were asking about them. So I sell them now. So if you want to check them out, they will be linked in the description below. And there's always a special promo code for the YouTube people. But again, they are not essential at all. And for the first few steps here, we're just going to start with the most basic round brush we have. So that could mean going, if you're working with free procure brushes, the airbrushing pack that comes with the app and picking something like the hard brush, making sure the opacity of your brush is up to 100%, of course. Now, if you're working in a different software, just the most basic round brush you have that doesn't have texture or feathering or anything weird about it, just a round brush, that's it. If you do have my illustration bundle, you could go in the texture pack and pick the base round brush. And the brush size doesn't matter at all here because we just want to draw a very rough oval that we can then fill in to create the base shape of the head. Now we're going to refine this shape first by adding a bit of a divot in the front to help us create the brow bone and the cheek. So just go ahead and select your eraser and set it to the exact same brush you're using for painting. So that could be the hard brush if you're working with free Procreate brushes, or if you're working with my illustration bundle, which I'm struggling to find right now, there it is, the base round brush. And all you're going to do is just erase a little bit in words, roughly in the middle of the oval. So at this stage, we have something that looks like a kidney bean. Now on the opposite side of where we added this divot, we're going to add the ear and you can align the ear roughly in line with that divot. And here we have our second option of customization. So first one was the skin tone. Now here we're going to customize the jaw. So you could keep it pretty round like this if you want, which is going to make your character look very, very cute and quite young. You could have a bit more of a square jaw if you wanted your character to look more masculine. You could have a more rectangle jaw if you, again, wanted a more masculine character. You could have just still a very soft jaw, but longer if you want still a character that it looks feminine, but a little bit older. Or you could have what I'm going to draw, which is a slightly pointy jaw. Okay, so from there we're going to draw the neck and the shoulders and here I'm going with a very thin long neck but again that is something you can customize especially if you're drawing a more masculine character you might want to go with a wider neck but if you want to have the same style as me we're going to start the back of the neck right in line with where the ear connects with the jaw and the front of the neck is going to fall right behind the chin. So starting with those guides and then just drawing one flowy curve. So feel free to pause the video here if you need more time to play with the space shape. Otherwise, we're going to move on straight to adding a bit of shadows and textures and facial features. Now I say shadows, but we're going to keep them very simple here. We're just going to separate the head from the neck. So for that, go ahead and create a new layer above the face layer and rename that new layer to shadows. Now, if you do have masks in your software, we're going to make our job a little bit easier by applying the shadow layer as a clipping mask so that whatever we draw 
on the shadow layer stays within the base shape. If you do not have masks or if you don't know how to use them in your software, you're just going to need to be a little bit more precise and try to stay within the lines or be quite crazy and then come back once you're done with your shadows and erasing whatever spills out of the shape. So if you're working in Procreate, the way to apply the shadow layer as a clipping mask is very simple. Just tap on the layer and then select clipping mask from the menu. And in terms of color here, if you're using my color palette, you could go with just one shade darker. So I was using this skin tone here, so I'm just gonna go with the one right underneath. If you're using the darkest one, what you can do is just going in the classic editor here and manually making the skin tone darker. And to make the piece a little bit more rich and interesting, we're going to start building textures within the illustration itself, so not just a texture layer. And so for that, we're going to use a brush that has texture within itself. Now, it doesn't need to be a fancy brush at all. If you're working with Procreate, I recommend going in the charcoal pack that comes with the app. So charcoal's right here. And picking something like the willow charcoal. Honestly, all of the options here, except for the burn tree, could work really well. I just think the willow charcoal is my personal favorite. If you're working in a different software, something that has charcoal and name should work really well. Or something that you can see has a bit of grit to it. If you are working with my illustration bundle though, we're going to go in the texture pack that comes with it and we're going to pick the basic texture brush. And so from there, you're just going to connect the chin to the ear to create the bottom part of the jaw. And from there, we're going to create a gradient from this line towards the bottom of the neck or, well, the middle of the neck, I guess. And so for that, you have a few different options. If you have an Apple Pencil or a pencil that has tilt sensitivity, you can just tilt your pencil and just like with a regular pencil, draw with the side of it, which is going to allow you to have a bigger size brush in creating this sort of gradient. If you do not have that tilt sensitivity, just increase the size of the brush. You should be using a small to medium brush at this point. Essentially anything that allows you to have a bit of a bigger shape so that you can create your gradient. So essentially here, all we're doing is we're using that shadow over most of the neck, kind of at an angle, as you can see, and a little bit of the top of the shoulder in the back. That's it. Now, once you've done that, if you want, you can go back to your eraser and just erase along the jaw to clean up that line a little bit. Great. So we're essentially going to do the same thing, but this time with a red or a pink, depending on your base skin tone, to add cheeks, nose, and other details that are really going to help the character look more alive and warm. So go ahead and create a new layer above your shadows layer. And rename that one to, I'll just go with red. Now if clipping masks are available to you once more, just go ahead and apply that layer as a clipping mask. If not, you can always come back and just erase what is spilling at the end, it doesn't matter. Now if you're working with my color palette, as you can see here, I included a couple different options. I think I'm actually going to add another one because that one is definitely not dark enough for a dark skin tone like this. So if you're working with a darker skin tone, just pick one of the bottom options. If you're working with a lighter skin tone, you can experiment with one of the two at the tops, totally up to you. I'm gonna go with the middle one right here. And as you can see, it is a kind of a red that has a little bit of orange in it. So it's a bit more of a salmon-y red than just a pink, like a Barbie pink red. You can see the saturation is pretty much in the middle and the brightness is a little bit more bright than the middle itself. And here we're going to stick with the same textured brush we've been using and we're going to draw big circles for the cheeks. And here you're gonna go with a medium to big size brush. The exact size again doesn't matter at all, but you definitely want to have something a little bit bigger than what we had before to draw details. And you're going to align the top of your circles with the little divot we have in the head. And then the bottom of the circle is going to be pretty much in the middle of this bottom section. So, kind of like this.
Now I'm realizing I think mine are a little bit too dark, so I'm actually going to go ahead and just select the option above in the color palette and just drop it on top. And yeah, that's much better. Now from there, we're also going to use this color to color the top of the ear and the top of the shoulders. So just very loosely adding a gradient on top of those elements. And we're also going to start mapping out the nose and the arch of the eyebrow. And for now, we're going to keep these elements super simple. So we're going to start with just a bit of a triangle for the nose that we might come back and play with later as we add the facial features themselves. And so we're going to start the top of the triangle, again, just in line with that little divot, pretty close to the right cheek. And we're just going to bring it down a little bit above the middle of that right cheek bring it back inside, and then fill it in with a bit of a gradient. And then we're going to create essentially the same triangle, but flipped and above for the eyebrow, or the brow bone, I should say. So you can just lift up your line like this, and then create a gradient that goes a little bit towards the top right. Great. Now I know it looks crazy right now, so we're going to just start adding the facial features to make it look a little bit less insane. So go ahead and create a new layer above all the layers you have for the face. It doesn't need to be a clipping mask. And rename that new layer to Facial Features. Now here we're going to start, I guess, with the nose because we already have it pretty much mapped out. And in terms of color for the nose, go ahead and color pick in the area where the cheeks make the shadow. So you get a bit of a blend of those two colors and then make that a little bit darker. And here you can stick with the same brush if you want, that would work well. Or if you want to have a bit more precision, but still a bit of texture, try to find a pencil brush. So if you're working with free Procreate brushes, that would mean going in the sketching pack that comes with the app right here and picking something like the HB or 6B pencils, both would work really well. I think it's going to depend mostly on your canvas size. If you have a very big canvas, you might need to go with the 6B pencil because it is a little bit thicker. If you do have my illustration bundle though, we're actually going to pick in the texture pack that comes with it. I keep looking for it today. There it is. I guess we're going to go with the sketching brush. I, I was about to say outlines, but we're going to go with the sketching brush to have a little bit more softness in our lines. And in terms of the brush size here, you're just going to have to test, honestly, because it's going to depend on the brush you're using, your canvas size, as well as just your personal preference. Now I'm going to go with something that, as you can see, is pretty thick, but not huge. And here we're just going to start with a line for the bridge of the nose. And that line can be super curvy if you have a pointy nose, or it could be pretty flat if you want to have, well, a more flat nose. And then same thing with the bottom of the nose, you could have a very long line if you want to draw a big nose, a pretty small line if you want a small nose. Really here, it's entirely up to you. And I feel like my pink or red is coming a little bit too high, so I'm actually going to set my eraser to the same brush I used to add those pink elements, so either a charcoal brush or if you have my illustration bundle, the basic texture brush. Or actually, you know what? There's an eraser shape within that bundle, so eraser shape. And I'm just going to gently erase the red that is on the nose side, so not on the eye side, really the nose side. Now going back on the facial features layer, we're going to move on to adding a little bit of details in the ear with the same color while we have it. And here I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm just going to draw this kind of little squiggle right here. Now from there we're going to move on to a darker version of whatever color we have right now. That is going to be almost black, but not quite. So just going back to your color selector and manually bring it down 
until, as you can see, the brightness is really, really low and the saturation is still roughly in the middle. And we're going to use that color to draw the eyes. Now the eyes, you could draw a completely different style if you want, but I'm going to keep it very simple and peaceful by drawing these very soft U shapes. And it's going to be very easy to place them. Again, we're just going to align them with the divot we have in the head. As you can see, the one on the right is almost touching the edge of the face, and then the one on the left is towards the front of the cheek, so it is not in the middle of this left section, it is a little bit more towards the nose. If you want to make your character look a little bit more feminine, what you can do is thicken the outside edges of these lines and add some simple lashes. Now I'm just going to add three of these triangles for the lashes, the biggest one or longest one at the top, and then getting slightly smaller the closer we get to the middle of the lash or the lash line. Doing the same thing on both sides. And then we're going to draw the mouth. Again, the mouth is something you can customize. I'm going with a super simple closed mouth. Now, no matter which style of mouth you want to draw, we're going to place it a little bit above the bottom of the cheeks and a little bit more towards the left side than the right. And here, if you want to have a bit of lipstick on your character or reinforce the lips, you could just go ahead and color pick the same color you used for the cheeks and all of that, so the pink or the red, and just go above the mouth and draw a bit of a semicircle like this. That would become lips. You could also draw a rounded M shape if you wanted for the lips to have that Cupid bow action going on. But again, as I mentioned, I'm just going to draw a simple line for a closed mouth for my, my character. That's what I prefer. But I'm going to add a bit of a underline to map out the lower lip. And for that, I'm just going to color pick the color I used for the shadows. So right here. And I'm just going to add that little secondary line right here. Great. Now from there, we're going to add some eyebrows, super important. We can still stay on the same facial features layer. And here, I do not know why, but I decided to go with dark blue hair for this character. So I'm going to use the same dark blue for the eyebrows as well. You could obviously customize a piece by going with a completely different hair color, of course. If you want to do that, I recommend playing with bright colors. So for example, if you'd want to draw a character that has more uh, ginger or red hair going with really a bright orange. If you want to go with a character that has blonde hair, you could try going with a light blue. So try experimenting with something that is not natural, that is super crazy and colorful, but would match maybe a little bit more the brightness or the darkness of the hair. Now I'm personally going to use this blue right here at the top of the blue column in the color palette. As you can see, it is pretty much middle of the way in terms of saturation. Now, that is one thing that if you do want to pick your own color, I recommend keeping consistent the saturation level. So in that case, going with whatever hue you want, so orange, green, blue, whatever, but middle of the way in terms of saturation. And here we're going to stick with the same brush, which is going to zoom in and add some eyebrows. Again, that is something you can customize. You could have any kind of eyebrow shape you want, any kind of arch, uh, any kind of flatness, any kind of thickness with that is something that you can really easily change to make your piece your own. I'm just going to go with a cartoonish version of my own eyebrows. So pretty flat in the front or the middle, I would say, and then just kind of arching down into a little bit of a tail on the sides. And we're going to align the eyebrows this time with the, well, <laughs> the brow bone that we drew with the pink or the red. So you can just start by quickly mapping out the shape. Now the inside of the brows, you can align them with the inside corner of the eyes. And on the right side, the outside is going to connect with the side of the face. And on the left side, the outside is going to just be a little bit longer than the outside of the eye.
And then once you have the base shape, you can manually fill them in. I do recommend adding a few little strokes on the inside just to make it look a little bit more like hair, but otherwise you can fully fill in the inside. If you are enjoying this tutorial so far, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Now, I know everyone on YouTube is asking you to do that, but believe it or not, it is a fantastic way to help your favorite creators because it essentially just tells YouTube to take the video and show it to more people. So thank you for helping. And because we drew all the facial features on a separate layer than the skin and the pink and all those things, it's going to be very easy to move them around if you're not super happy with how things are looking right now. So for example, I feel like this eyebrow, I don't know, it's a weird angle. So I might just go ahead making sure my facial features layer is the one that is selected. And with any kind of selection tool, such as this one here in Procreate, drawing a selection around the facial feature element that I want to move. And then using an arrow tool to maybe rotate it, move it, I don't know, resize it. Really anything that is needed to make the facial feature look good to you. So feel free to pause the video here, take all the time you need to play around with your facial features until you're really happy with them. And then we're going to meet up in the next step, which is going to be adding maybe freckles and a little bit of highlights on the face before starting with the hair. Great, so once you're happy with the facial features, as I mentioned, we're just going to come back in, add some freckles if you'd like, and maybe some highlights to make the face pop a little bit more. Now I'm going to start with the freckles because it's very simple. We're just going to create a new layer below the facial features, but above everything else. Renaming that layers to freckles and also applying it as a clipping mask. And this is something you can do even if you don't have freckles, just to add texture to your character. In that case, you could pick a random color, like the hair color or another bright color, and just add a bit of that texture on the face. Again, not necessarily to look like freckle, but just to amp up the visual signature of the piece. Now, in my case, I do have freckles, so I'm going to just pick a brown, which is going to be the same one I use for the nose and the ear. So I'm just going to color pick that. And here you can either keep the same brush you've been using to draw the facial features and just manually come in and draw the freckles. But if you do have my illustration bundle, there is a freckles brush because I really like adding freckles. So you could just pick that brush, just experiment with the size a little bit before you get started. That's a personal preference, which size you use here. And then just add the freckles under the eyes, on the cheeks maybe a little bit on top of the nose or on the bridge of the nose, I guess. And then back on the other cheek. So you're drawing this W shape essentially over the face. Now, if you're feeling a bit extra here, you could also go in your blending modes and just scroll through the list and see if there's something that you like. Again, it doesn't need to look like realistic freckles. So you could have bright freckles, you could have colorful freckles. Really, it's just a case of scrolling through the list and seeing there's something that you like. I would recommend avoiding going with red freckles because that might look a little bit more like pimples. Although you could have pimples if you want in your character, but I'm personally going to try and avoid that. Something bright, honestly, could look really fun, but I'm personally gonna go with, I think multiplied, but with a bit of a lower opacity. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And actually, I'm going to add a few on the shoulders as well. Why not? There we go. And the last thing we're going to do before moving on to the hair is going to be adding some highlights onto the face to really make it pop, like I mentioned. So go ahead and create a new layer above all of those clipping masks we have. Apply as a clipping mask as well. So it should be under the facial features layer, but above everything else. And rename that layer to lights. And here, all you're going to do is color pick the color you use for the face and make it really, really bright and desaturated. 
Now, I'm not gonna add the Xcode here because it's really going to depend on what you've been working on, but we're looking for something almost fully desaturated and almost fully bright, but not quite. And here you're just gonna go back to whichever brush you've been using to add the facial features, so a pencil brush or the sketching brush. And we're just going to add a highlight on the bridge of the nose, one on the right side of the face, and then a few dots on the cheeks and maybe the shoulders, again, just to make the piece pop. So it's nothing realistic, but it's really going to bring everything to life. So again, just one small line on the front of the nose. Ooh, sorry about that. <laughs> And then a few highlights on the cheeks and the shoulders, potentially. So I'm going to go with three highlights per cheek, but you could just draw one or not at all. So three slightly different sizes, as you can see. And I'm going to do the same thing on the shoulders. Okay, so now that we have the face, we're ready to draw the hair. And this is another element that you can very easily customize to either match your own hair or someone else's hair, depending on who you're drawing. And the main thing to keep in mind here is we're not going to consider the hair as being a bunch of individual strands. We're going to consider the hair as just the one main shape that it is. So the length, and is it straight? Is it wavy? Is it curvy? Is it coily? What kind of texture the hair has? And so here try to picture the hairstyle that you want to draw and try to picture how it would look on a Lego character. So you know there's that flat piece of plastic that looks like a little bit of helmet. Just try to see how that would look and then that's exactly what you're going to draw. One thing I would say though here is even if you're drawing straight hair, try to add a little bit of movement to it. So just the slightest wave, otherwise it's going to look very, very flat and still, and it's not going to work super well with the style of the illustration, which is much more fluid and groovy, I guess. Now, no matter which hairstyle you're drawing, we're all going to create a new layer above everything we have that is related to the face. And we're going to rename that new layer to hair. I know, what a surprise. And here we're going to pick the same color we've been using for the eyebrows, so you can either color pick it, or I remember in my case it was this one right here in the color palette. And we're going to stick with the same brush that we've been using for the facial features, so a pencil brush or a sketching brush if you're working with my illustration bundle. So I'm just going to show you real quick the outlines option that you could use depending on, I guess, the level of curls that you have in the hair that you want to draw. So if you want to draw straight hair, like I mentioned, just try to add this slightest little bend in it just so it's not fully flat. Something like this, depending on the length, of course. If you're drawing wavy hair, which is what I'm going to be drawing, we're going to go with a little bit more of a S kind of shape in the outline. If you want to draw curly hair, you're really going to accentuate that S shape. So it's still going to be an S shape, but quite a bit tighter. And if you want to draw coily hair here, we're actually going to go with more of a cloud shape. So you know when you draw clouds, you're drawing this kind of shape. Well, that's what we're going to use for the outline of the hair. Again, depending on the shape and the size and the hairstyle, but using always that kind of cloud shape. So again, like I mentioned, I'm personally going to go with wavy hair, so I'm just going to draw very loose S shapes. And as you can see, my hair is quite long, so I'm going to just draw them right to the bottom of the screen, but you could have a completely different length, of course. And as you can see, I recommend going first with the sides, then maybe mapping out the insides. So if you want to have hair coming over the shoulders, in my case, I'm just going to pretend it's all behind, so I'm just going to draw a line that essentially follows the shape of the shoulder.
In the right side of the head, because the head is in front of the hair, we're definitely just going to follow the shape of the head, so that's quite easy. Then you're going to follow essentially the same shapes you use for the outsides, bring it towards the top of the hair and the head, leaving a little bit of a gap. So you're not going to connect it like that, that's going to make the head look really flat. You're just going to bring it a little bit above the shape of the head itself. Now the forehead is something, again, you can customize a lot because you could have, um, what is it called, like a fringe moment, you could have split in two parts like a curtain bangs, you could have kind of like what I'm going to be drawing which is similar to what I have, a part that is just slightly to the side and then you have kind of a few strands of hair that fall in front of the face. So really here, experiment, just remember again, we're not going with a lot of hair strands, we're just going with the basic general shape. So in my case here, what I'm doing is bringing the hair pretty much to the top of the head and I'm going to draw one big swoop that is going to fall above the ear and then just a bit of a detailed hair strand poking out like this. Then connecting the bottom of the ear and one thing I always like to do on my characters, just to help separate the ear from the head, is actually drawing this little U-shape like this, which would be kind of this part of the hair. I know you don't see it that strongly, especially on female characters, but I always draw it and that's part of my style, so feel free to add it if you want or just leave it if you don't. Otherwise, when you have a full, completely closed outline of the hair, you can just color drop your color and fill in the hair silhouette. Now since we are working with a brush that has texture, you might need to adjust the threshold, especially if you're working in Procreate. And the way to do that is just hold your pencil on the screen when you drop the color and move it towards the right to reduce the threshold or towards the left to increase the threshold. So the goal here is to find the moment right before the color fills in the entire screen, so in my case, uh, 80%. And then of course you can come back in and refine the shape. I feel like I made the top of the head so flat and then the left side so flat as well. So I'm just going to come back in and play with that a little bit. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this fun video, please go ahead and let me know which color you're using for the hair. And as you may know, the secret password is a game that we play here on the channel and all of the long form step-by-step -step illustration tutorials, I hide either a secret password or a question for you to find and then answer in the comments. And believe it or not, the secret password is really helpful for me because it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me create better tutorials for you. So again, if you've watched this far, just let me know which color you're planning on using for the hair, and then we're going to keep going. And if you do want to add some hair strands on the very outside of the hair, you could do it at this stage, keeping it very simple. So I might add just a little one here, poking out of this curve. To make the piece flow a little bit better and then to tie in that loose strands that otherwise is the only one that is loose. So maybe adding one here and maybe another one on the other side just to balance it out a bit.
Now from there, we're going to add a bit of volume to the hair. And for that, you have a few different techniques that you can use depending on the hairstyle that you're drawing. But no matter the hairstyle, we're all going to create a new layer above the layer we have so far so that we can apply it as a clipping mask, just like we did for the shadows onto the face and the neck. So a new layer above the hair, renaming that new layer to shadows, applying that layer as a clipping mask onto the hair layer so that it stays within the hair shape and going with a darker version of whatever hair color you're using. So if you're working with the same dark blue that I'm using, we're going to pick this one right here in the color palette. As you can see, it's still pretty much middle of the way in terms of saturation, but it is really, really, really dark. And here we're going to go back to the charcoal brush or whichever brush we were using for these kind of shadows and rough details. So in Procreate, if you were working with free brushes, that meant going in the charcoal pack and picking the willow charcoal. If you were working a different software, any brush that either had charcoal in name or just a really interesting texture that you liked was your ticket to success here. And if you do have my illustration bundle, again, we were working with the basic texture brush. And here the goal is going to be adding a shadow behind the neck and the shoulders just to make the face pop even more. But that shadow is going to depend on the hairstyle that you're drawing. So if you're drawing hair that is either straight or curvy, you're going to draw those shadows using the same shapes you use for the outlines of the hair, but just this time focusing it on the middle. And you're going to try to keep those shadows pretty crisp. So that's what I'm going to do for myself. So I'm just going to show you an example real quick here. So I might just follow this hair strand right here and draw another bit of a hiss curve and then manually fill in this entire section to have a bit of the texture. Now if you're drawing curly or coily hair, having this sharp of an edge doesn't really look right for the hairstyle. So what I recommend doing instead is going with a much bigger size of your brush and creating a gradient instead from the, again, the side of the neck towards the outside of the hairstyle. So it would look a little bit more like this. Now again, because I'm drawing wavy hair, I'm gonna go with a straight edge, but just draw whatever you need for your own character. And here I kind of have a swoop that in my mind is falling in front of this part of the hair. So I'm just going to zoom onto that and add a very crisp line right below the swoop. And then just adding a bit of a gradient just to help add again a bit of volume to the hair. Great. Now from there, we're going to add even more details to the hair. We're still not going to draw the hair strand texture itself, but we're going to draw, I, I don't know, a handful of hair strand per side just to make the hair a little bit less flat and boring. So go ahead and create a new layer above the shadows, rename that one to hair details. And again, if you have clipping mask, go ahead and use it on this hair details layer so that we stay within the hair shape. If you don't, not a big deal. You can just, again, come back at the end and erase whatever is poking out or just focus on staying within the lines. And here we're gonna go a, a lighter version of whatever hair color we've been working with. So if you're using my color palette, we're going to go with this blue right here at the very bottom of the blue column, which as you can see is the exact same hue. It is still pretty much middle of the way in terms of the saturation, but it is quite a bit brighter. And here we're going to go back to the brush we use for the facial features. So a pencil brush or the sketching brush if you have my illustration bundle. And you're going to just test the size so it is similar to what you use for the nose, the eyes, and the ears. It really doesn't need to be the exact same, but it should be pretty similar. And here you're just going to draw little hair strands that are going to match the outlines that you have. Except if you're drawing coily hair, you don't want to draw these little cloud shapes, although you could. I recommend instead here coming back in and drawing spirals. Now there's really no right or wrong way to do this here, so feel free to experiment. If there was one thing I would say though, is you do not want to overdo it, so less is more here. And I say, you know, match the line to the outlines of the hair, but you can mix and match, honestly. My hair, well, 
it's not really like that today. It's quite flat today because it's dry, but the bottom has a bit more ringlets than just the top, which is really flat because, again, it's dry. You could go back in, for example, and draw, yes, these little S curves, but add a few little ringlets in there just for fun. Maybe drawing a bit of a zigzag for, for the parting, if that helps, if you have one at least. So feel free to pause the video here if you need more time to play around with the hair shape. Again, it should be very simple, so don't agonize over it. And when you're ready, we're going to meet up in the next chapter, which is going to be adding accessories and uh, clothing. Okay, so the goal here is not to overpower the character. We are going to add a bunch of uh, groovy, colorful shapes in front and behind the character, which is going to hide a lot of those shoulders that we have going on. So the idea is really not to come back in and draw a lot of precise clothing here. It is just to maybe customize and personalize your piece even more. So for example here, I have this rabbit necklace, which I really love. So I could come back in and just draw a very simplified version of that rabbit necklace on my character. If you have a pair of earrings that you wear all the time, you could come back in and draw them. If you have a shirt with a neckline, that is very typical to you, you could go ahead and draw it. But no matter which element you're drawing, one thing that is really important is to draw it in white or a very bright gray. I'm going to give you the exact color in a second so that it doesn't compete too much with all the colorful blobs we're going to add in the next chapter. So go ahead and create a new layer above everything you have relating to the character and rename that new layer to Accessories. Now, if you have a texture in the background, just go ahead and color pick anywhere, honestly you're gonna get some sort of a, a pale gray that would work really well. And as you can see here, it is a neutral gray in the sense that the saturation is fully down. It is almost white, but not quite. So very, very, very bright. And here we're gonna stick with the exact same brush that we've been using for the facial features. So again, pencil brush or sketching brush. I feel like I'm repeating myself, sorry about that. And we're going to zoom in and add any element you want. I would recommend trying to look at whatever element you're trying to draw and draw it in the most basic version you can. So like pendant earrings could literally just be one long line. A necklace could be just that very basic necklace U-shape with a super simplified version of whatever charm you might have. So like a little cross. As you can see, really basic shapes, almost just one single line for the whole thing. If you are drawing clothing elements, of course you can all just go ahead and draw one outline and call it clothes, although that kind of looks fun, but it might be a little bit too weird. So what I would recommend doing instead is drawing, well, the clothing element itself, either filling it in manually or color dropping, and then lowering the opacity of your layer probably around 90 or 95 just so it's not fully opaque and so that you can see a little bit of the skin underneath. Now in my case, I don't know why I never wear chokers, but I think it looks really fun on a long neck. So I'm just going to draw three very simple lines on the neck and that's pretty much all I'm going to do in terms of accessories. So once more, feel free to pause the video here if you need more time to draw your accessories. Really, this is something that is super easy to do but can completely transform your piece, so it's worth doing. And once you're done, we're going to meet up in the next chapter, which is going to be adding all those colorful blobs that is going to completely bring the piece to life and make it super fun and groovy. Now, I'm going to start by adding some of the colorful blobs onto the hair itself. I just think it makes the piece a little bit more whimsical, but you could just skip ahead a little bit and go straight to the blobs that are around the character. So if you want to have some blobs onto the hair, just go ahead and create a new layer right above everything you have for the hair, but still below the accessories. We are not going to apply this layer as a clipping mask. I'm going to tell you why in a few seconds, but we are going to rename it to... Oh gosh, uh, let's just go with hair blobs. <laughs> 
<laughs> doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but we'll know what we mean. <laughs> And here you can use whatever kind of color palette you want. So I'm gonna go with a bunch of different colors, but if you wanted, you could pick one basic hue, like, I don't know, green, and then just go with a bunch of different greens. Uh, you could go with a bunch of purples and pinks. So just staying within the same kind of colors, but with a little bit of variation. But you do wanna make sure they're going to be bright and fun. So if you have my color palette, essentially we're going to be working with these nine colors, which as you can see, they're all pretty much not fully saturated. They're kind of middle of the way to two-thirds of the way up in terms of saturation, but they're never fully saturated. I feel like if we were going with a lot of bright colors that are fully saturated, it's going to make the piece look just too much. So we're going to reel it in by adding a bit of gray in our colors. And here I recommend just honestly starting with whichever one color, drawing all the blobs, and then just changing the colors of the blobs. I think it's a little bit easier that way you're gonna have a better idea of the composition if you're working with just one color and then changing that color as if you were to start with all the different colors at once. And here there's not really any rhyme or reason in terms of where I'm putting <laughs> those blobs. So really put them wherever you want, it doesn't matter. We just want to, again, add a little bit more of that whimsical fun feel to the piece. And as you can see here, I'm filling these blobs manually because I do want to build a lot of texture within them. So I recommend you do the same. But if you want to use color drop, you can, of course. It's just the, the piece is going to look a little bit more flat and I think it's nice to have a bit more texture than just flat colors. And then just so that they blend in a little bit better with the hair itself, we're also going to lower the opacity of that hair blobs layer, probably around, I would guess between 80 and 90%, just again so we can see a little bit of the hair strands underneath, but still having very vibrant colors. I think I'm going to set mine at 86. There we go. Now we're going to come back and add gradients to these hair blobs to make them a little bit more interesting, but before that, while we have the proper brush, we're going to draw the blobs in front of the character and then the ones in the back. So for the blobs in the front, just create a new layer above everything you have so far, except for any texture you might have at the top. And let's just rename that new layer to front blobs. Why not? And here, same brush, same color for now. We're just going to draw whatever blobby shape we want at the bottom. There's really, again, no right or wrong way to do this here. Just go ahead and draw some fun shapes. Now these blobs, if you want, you can go ahead and experiment with playing with opacity, but I'm going to keep mine at 100%. I think it just frames the piece a little bit better. And once we have them, we're just gonna go back and create another layer at the very back with more blobs. But before that, we might actually organize our file a little bit just by grouping our layers a little bit. So to group layers in Procreate, it's very easy. All you have to do is take one finger and swipe the layers you want to select towards the right. So I'm just going to start by selecting all the layers relating to the head and the face, so from face to facial feature, and creating a group with that, just so we have everything a little bit better organized again. So tapping on group right here, which as you can see, just creates this group with all the facial features and facial elements, which if you tap on the little arrow right here, you can then collapse, which makes the whole layer list so much clearer. And you can also rename the group. I'm going to go with just face. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the hair, again, just to keep the file more organized. So from hair to hair blobs, grouping that, collapsing the group, and renaming the group to hair. Okay, now it's much easier to see what we're doing. So from there, if you want to add more blobs in the background, you would just create a new layer. 
putting it below everything you have and renaming it to back blobs. Otherwise, same thing as for the front blobs, we're just going to draw whatever shape. Although these, you probably want to bring them higher around the character as opposed to just focusing them on the bottom. And then once you have all the blobs mapped out, we're going to come back in and recolor them just so they're not all one flat color. And then we'll look to add some gradients and a bit of light within the blobs. So I'm going to start by just recoloring the hair blobs. So just going back to that hair blobs layer. And because they're on separate layer, you can just go ahead, pick any color you want. Let's say I'm going to go with this purple right here and then just drop it onto one blob to recolor it. So again, there's really no right or wrong way here. Experiment with placement of different colors. You could always change them very easily. So just try a bunch of things until you're happy with the result. And I'm noticing here, I was not really doing that intentionally, but I think my brain is telling me that's probably a good thing to keep in mind. You can see my blobs are essentially creating a bit of a gradient, like a, a rainbow gradient from a aqua blue green at the top here, towards a blue, towards a purple, towards a pink, and then an orange. So if you look at kind of the color sector here, it is a gradient kind of from this here towards here towards here. So what I'm saying here essentially is it might be a good thing to keep in mind if you're going with a bunch of colors like me, adding some sort of a gradient between the different blobs so that they're not just like, for example, orange there, uh, yellow there, and then blue, keeping it in a bit more of a flow in the colors. Now I've been filming for a while now, so if what I just said makes no sense, don't worry about it. Just experiment with the colors and if you find something that you like, that's really all that matters. Great, now we're going to do the exact same thing on the front blobs, but not the back blobs, because the back blobs, I want them to be a little bit less uh, eye-catching. So I'm just going to create a soft gradient within them, because if it's a bunch of colors, it's going to really distract from the character itself, and that's definitely not what we want. That being said, though, the front blob, we can color them as desired. So just going back onto that front blob layer and using the same technique, so just dropping some colors, maybe in a bit of a gradient, onto the front blobs. And if you have two that are overlapping, not a problem. You can just draw the line between them. And then when you drop your color, you can adjust the threshold so that instead of filling everything, it just fills one of the sides. Oops. There we go. Now, before we add the gradients to the blob, which is going to be very easy, but is again, just going to bring the piece up a notch, we're also going to add some white blobs above everything just to make the piece pop even more. So go ahead and create a new layer above everything, except for the texture if you do have some. Rename that new layer to white blobs. And here you're just going to color pick the same color you use for the accessories. So if it is still in history, you can pick it there. Otherwise, what you can do is just hide any texture layer you have to make sure you're color picking the right color. Then reactivating the texture and using the color itself. Again, there's no right or wrong way to do these white blobs. I just think they add a bit more dimension to the piece. I'm personally going to keep them on the smaller side and I'm going to keep them as ovals as opposed to really blobby shapes. But it really doesn't mean that's what you have to do. If you want to go with something else, please feel free to go ahead and experiment. And I think I'm going to keep mine in groups. So instead of drawing a bunch kind of all over the place, well, I have one single one there, but otherwise you can see it's two and then three. So really just focusing them on 
specific sections of the piece, especially where you have a lot of color density, adding a bit of white can just help everything pop a little bit more. And speaking of making everything pop a little bit more, if you want, you get add a bit of a shadow behind those blobs when you're done. And so the way to do that would just be duplicating that white blob layer that you have. So in Procreate, the way to do that is just swiping the layer towards the left with one finger, tapping duplicate, then picking the bottom copy, maybe hiding the top copy just for now so we can see what we're doing. So just tapping on the check mark on the top copy. Renaming the bottom copy actually to White Blob Shadows. And here, just go ahead and pick a gray that has a bit of a hue to it, probably more of a purple hue than a kind of greenish yellow, otherwise it's going to look really muddy and gross. So the exact color really doesn't matter, probably middle of the way in terms of brightness and really quite desaturated, but again, just a, a grayish purple is all you need here. And you're just going to color drop that onto one of your white shapes and adjusting the threshold until it fills all of the shapes. And then to create the shadow effect, what we're going to do is reactivate the white blobs layer we have. And then we're going to move this shadow layer a little bit towards the bottom left to create the drop shadow effect. So using any kind of tool that you have that allows you to move a layer, like an arrow tool, and then just moving those shadows a little bit like this. Now, if you do have blending modes in your software, you can bring the shadows to the next level by applying a blending mode. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Again, in Procreate, blending modes are in the little N next to the check mark. You can tap on that. And again, you can just scroll through the list and find something that you like. I personally know I'm going to go with linear burn, or you could use multiply as well. That would be a good option. And probably lowering the opacity here so you can get something a little bit softer than what we had. And so the last thing we have to do is just add a bit of a gradient within the shapes. Super easy, but it's going to completely transform everything. And for that, there is a few different techniques that you can use. If you're working in software like Photoshop and you have a gradient tool, then you can apply a gradient in the shapes very easily. So feel free to use that tool if you have one. In Procreate, there isn't any gradient tool, at least, that would work for these purposes. So what we're going to do is we're going to use masks, and then we're going to use the big charcoal brush, which is going to allow us to build even more texture. So I guess it's a good thing in the end. And then we're just going to paint the gradient ourselves. Now let's start with the background blob, because right now it's really flat and I don't like that. So we're going to use, honestly, any kind of mask that you know you have in your software. So it could be a clipping mask just like before. So in that case, you would just create a new layer above the back blobs, rename that to gradient or something like that, and apply that as a clipping mask onto the blobs so that the gradient stays within the blob shapes. That would be one option. But I feel like we're starting to have a lot of layers. And since we're not going to need to move that gradient independently from the blobs, like we had, for example, to move the facial features from the face, what we can do is activate a mask onto the blob layer itself. So I'm just going to delete that layer, which is going to tell our software to keep the lines we're drawing now within the blob shape, but it's still going to be just one layer. So that type of mask we're using here is called Alpha Lock, and to activate it within Procreate, it's very easy. You just take two fingers, swipe your layers towards the right, which is going to bring in this little checkered pattern here. If for some reason it doesn't work, you can just tap on the layer and select alpha lock from the menu. And alpha lock, just like clipping mask, is pretty common. So there's a high chance that you could find it in your own software as well. So you could just Google alpha lock and the name of your software and you would probably find something there. And from there, we're just gonna go back to the brush that we used that was a textured brush. If you have the illustration bundle, that was the basic texture brush. And there's a few different methods you could use here, either color picking, whatever color you have on that specific blob, and then changing the hue. So just playing with what we usually call the color here. So not necessarily the brightness or the saturation, but really the hue itself. And going with something either on the right or on the left of your base color. If you do have my color palette, you can kind of see the gradient right here. So you could just pick one of the colors that is next to the base color you use for that blob. So in my case, the blob was this kind of sky blue right here. So I'm going to start with a bit of that aqua green. And just with a big version of my brush, brush that over one side of the shape. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side again, just to amp it up a little bit. So that was my base color here. This time I'm going to change the hue instead of going 
with more of a green, more of a purple. So this one in the color palette. Otherwise, same thing, just big brush and creating a bit of a gradient onto the other side. So we're just going to repeat these steps with the other kind of blobs we have. So next I'm going to move on to the front blobs. So either creating a clipping mask, applying it to the front blobs, or activating alpha lock if that is available to you. And then either just color picking and then changing the hue and playing with the different options. And I think for best results here, you always want to add two colors, so on either sides of your base color. So in my case here, I went, I had a purple and I went with more of a pink, kind of red pink. I'm gonna go with a purple that has a bit more blue for the other side. Now to give you an example, if, if you were to stray from the color palette, the base color for this blob here was this yellow golden orange. So I went with a redder orange for the bottom. And then this time I would go towards the other side, which a much brighter yellow or greenish yellow for the other side of my gradient. Now once more here, I'm not going to add all of the hex codes. Don't freak out. It doesn't need to be a specific color. Just experiment with things. We just want to add a bit more of a vibe, the exact color code does not matter at all. There's really no need to take the time to try and get the exact same color as I'm using. It's really not worth it, trust me. And once you have the front blobs color then, we're going to do the exact same thing on the hair blobs. So either applying a clipping mask onto the hair blob or activating alpha lock if that is available to you. And then just going back in and adding the same style of gradient. If you're free to pause the video here if you need a little bit more time to create gradients onto your blob. And once you're done, we're going to meet up one last time to add even more details and highlights onto the blobs themselves to make the piece look even more professional. So once you're happy with your blob gradients, we're going to add some highlights onto the blobs that are on the hair and maybe a little bit on the ones that are in the front. And we're going to start with the ones on the hair because these are the ones that definitely need some highlights. So go ahead and create a new layer above the hair blobs and rename that new layer to Hair Blobs Light. Now these lights, we want them to stay within the blobs. So if it is available to you, go ahead and apply this layer as a clipping mask onto the hair blob. Now if you do have blending modes in your software, we're also going to use a blending modes for the hair blob light to open my blending mode list. If you don't have blending modes, it doesn't matter. You're just gonna pick the same bright color you use for the highlights on the face. But if you do have blending modes, go ahead and select something such as overlay or soft light. I think I'm going to go with, mm, I think I'm going to go with soft light for now, but that's something you can always change as you go. And just like we did for the white blobs, we're just going to deactivate whatever paper texture we might have at the top so that we can select the exact right color. We're going to color pick that, reactivate the paper texture, go back to whatever pencil or sketching brush we were using. And then we're just going to, similarly to what we did on the face, outline the top right section of those hair blobs and add extra little dots on the top right. So it's going to look a bit like this, although I'm realizing right now, honestly, soft light is not cutting it. I think I'm gonna switch already to overlay. Should be a little bit brighter. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to go with. But once more, this is a case of you can just scroll through the list and find something you like. 
I think soft light is nice, but it's just a little bit too pale for my liking in this case. But otherwise, yeah, just a very simple thin line on the top right of these blobs and then maybe extra little dots similar to what we had on the cheeks. And if you want, you can finish up by doing the same thing on the blobs in the front. So I'm going to just collapse the hair group so again our file is a bit better organized. Then create a new layer above the front blob layer. Renaming that layer to front blobs light. <laughs> Using the same blending mode we used on the ones on the hair. So in my case, overlay. and applying the front blobs light layer, <laughs> that was hard to say, as a clipping mask onto the front blobs themselves so that whatever we draw now stays within these front blobs shape. And here, if you want, you could also draw this bit of a highlight. I think that brings too much attention to the front blobs, so I'm just going to draw the little dots, which is still going to make them look a little bit less flat without bringing too much attention again to them. I want the focus of the piece to be the character, not the blobs. And there you go. Now if you enjoyed this video and want more cartoon yourself tutorials, I highly recommend you check out this playlist because I have a bunch more for you. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos I post every Tuesday and Saturday. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.